In this video, we are going to discuss about how to find out the domain of any function. The book that I have taken is Arihant Differential Calculus written by Amit M. Agarwal. This book is a very good book to start with. So I have taken to do problems from exercise for session 2 and in the coming videos, I am going to upload the other session exercises also. So let us start with exercise with our first problem. fx equals to under root x square minus 5x plus 6. This is the question. Now, first of all, you have to understand to find out the domain. What is actually domain? Domain is to find out the values of x for which the function is defined. Where the function will not be defined? If you find some negative term coming inside root sign, then the function is not defined there because here we are dealing with the real values. In a fraction, in the denominator, if it comes to 0, then again the function is not defined and so on so forth. Okay. So, in this question, clearly this has to be greater than or equals to 0 because under the root sign, if 0 comes, it gives you 0. The answer is 0. So, it is very much defined. That is why I have taken an equal sign there. So, to define the function, your x square minus 5x plus 6 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, let me factorize it. Now, by using the number line method, therefore, the required domain is, is it clear to all of you? Have you understood it? So, this is the required domain of this given function. Okay. Let us move for the next problem. Again, to define this function here, this expression has to be greater than or equals to 0. So, that implies, if I factorize the denominator we are getting, okay. Now, applying the number line method we are getting, so your x will come in the positive block. Those who have not done the number line method, I have given the link of the video in the description box. Please go through those video for understanding the number line system. Therefore, the required domain will be x belongs to minus infinity minus half close or 0 to 1 or 2 to infinity. Is it clear to all of you? So, this is the required domain. Let us move for the next problem. Here to define the function, three cases we have to consider. The first one is, this must be greater than or equals to 0. Then, this must be greater than or equals to 0. And, this has to be greater than or equals to 0. Is it clear? Now, from the first one, we are getting, is it okay? So, if I square both sides, we are going to get, Is it okay? So, if I square both sides, we are going to get. So, again from the number line, we can say. Is it clear to all of you? Now, move for the second condition. If I square both sides. Is it clear? Now, this is true for all x belongs to real value. And from the third one again, from this condition, you are again going to get. Right? Now, by combining these three results, we have to give our final answer. So, combining these three, we can say that x always lies between minus 1 and 1. Is it clear to all of you? Because x lying between minus 1 and 1 satisfying this condition, this condition, as well as this condition. So, this is the required domain of the given function. Clear? Let us move for the next problem. To define this function, the expression within the root sign has to be greater than or equals to 0. That is, okay, now you see. If I take x cube minus 1 common from the first two expressions we get. So, we are having, is it clear till this? 
Now you observe for all x belongs to real value x to the power 8 plus 1 is always greater than 0. Okay. Now if it is greater than 0 we can remove this expression from the given expression. It does not matter it will not affect your inequation. Moreover x square plus x plus 1 for this quadratic expression your a is 1 greater than 0 and discriminant which is less than 0. Now if for any quadratic expression if a is greater than 0 and discriminant is less than 0 then that expression is always greater than 0 for all x belongs to real value. This is all you will know in the quadratic equation chapter. So this expression is always greater than 0 because a is greater than 0 and discriminant is less than 0. So this portion also you can remove it from the inequation without affecting the given inequation. Okay. So the final inequation I can write it as yes or no. Okay. Now you see. Okay. Now for the expression x square minus x plus 1 look it carefully. Again here a is 1 greater than 0 and discriminant is minus 3 which is less than 0. A is greater than 0 discriminant is less than 0 implies this expression is always greater than 0 yes or no. Therefore this condition is satisfied for all x belongs to real value. Therefore the given domain of the function is x belongs to any real value. Have you understood it? Okay, move for the next problem. Say in this question, to define the function, first let us consider this expression. Now here to define the function, first condition is that 16 minus x has to be greater than equals to 2x minus 1. First condition. Second condition, 16 minus x has to be greater than 0. Third condition. 2x minus 1 has to be greater than or equals to 0. And the fourth condition that x must belongs to an integer. Is it clear? So from the first one we are going to get, from the second one we are getting, from the third one we are getting, and fourth one is x belongs to an integer. Now from these three conditions, the final answer that you can write is, x is greater than equals to half and less than equals to 17 by 3. Tell me yes or no. 17 by 3 means it is 5 point something, right? Now, x is lying from half and 5 point something. And since the fourth condition is x belongs to any integer, therefore the values of x that x will take are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is it clear? So these are the values of x which will satisfy the first expression. Now let us come for the second expression. 20 minus 3xp, 4x minus 5. Again the conditions are number 1. This is greater than 0, greater than equals to 4x minus 5, greater than equals to 0 and x belongs to integer. From the first condition you are getting, from the second one you are getting, from the third one you are getting. Now 20 by 3 means it is 6 point something. 25 by 7 means it is 3 point something, right? And 5 by 4 means it is 1.25. Okay. Now, from this 3, we can write that your x is greater than equals to 5 by 4 and less than equals to 25 by 7. Is it clear? But x belongs to an integer. So, the integers which belongs to this region are 2 and 3. Is it clear or not? Now, the final domain will be which will be the combination of this as well as this. Therefore, our answer that is the domain of this function will be x belongs to 2 and 3 only. Have you understood it? Because your final answer will be the combination of this and this. And the common elements are 2 and 3 only. Therefore, the required domain for this function are 
2 and 3 only. Okay. Let us move for the next problem. Again, in this problem, to define the function, look it carefully. NCR is always greater than 0. Therefore, x square 4x c 2x square plus 3, by default, it is greater than 0 for any values of x within the given domain. Right? Now, to define the function, first case is, this has to be greater than equals to number 2. This is greater than 0. Number 3 greater than equals to 0 and number 4 x belongs to an integer. Now from the first one you are getting after factorizing. So from the number line we are getting. Is it clear? Again I am mentioning if you have not learned number line I have given the link of my video in the description box. Please check it. See that video carefully to understand the number line system clearly. From the second one we are getting that implies I am not drawing the number line because after practicing number line a lot, you can do it simply by looking the in equation only. That exactly what I am doing right here. So from the number line only, if you try, you will get the answer as. And from the third one, 2x square plus 3 is always greater than 0 for all real values of x. Now by combining these three in equations, we are going to get. Is it clear? So that is the domain of x which are satisfying these three in equations. Now we have been said that x is an integer. So the integers between 1 and 3 are 1, 2 and 3. Is it clear to all of you? Therefore the required domain are 1, 2 and 3 only. That's it. That's your answer. Have you understood it clearly? Okay. 